There has not been a better opportunity for Ryan Day to win the national championship than right now. At the very least, win the Big Ten, but the national championship field is in striking distance as well for Ryan Day and the Buckeyes. I'm joined by Jay Stevens of Locked On Ohio State Buckeyes here on Locked On College Football. I look at all of these factors, Jay. Ohio State's offseason, how good of a team they were this past year, all the returners, Michigan's poised to step back. You got a number of things adding up. Am I crazy for thinking this is the best chance Ryan Day led Ohio State will have to win at least the Big Ten, if not the national championship? If you erase 2019, I would say yes. 2019's team for Ohio State was still the best. I mean, we have a complete season to say this. We don't know what 2024 is going to be for Ohio State, but 2019 was clearly the best team he's had so far and clearly the team that you thought of all of them so far could win a national championship. 2024, however, you get a experienced quarterback in Will Howard. You have a defense that's returning almost all of their draft-eligible guys. Still Chambers goes on to the NFL. Um, Michael Hall Jr. goes off to the NFL. You lose Josh Proctor, whose up his eligibility is complete. But Lakeland Ransom still there. Toy Malowal still there. Sawyer still there. Tyreek Williams is still there. You're losing a lot of guys where it's like, oh, you keep it a lot of guys where you're thinking, these are like day one, day two draft picks that are staying in Columbus. Can't forget Denzel Burke. So this this team, like right now with Michigan and the expanded Big Ten, which I do think will make Ohio State better for the expanded playoff, this is a time for Ryan Day. At this point in his career, you got to win the Big Ten. You got to win and beat your rival to give yourself a shot to win the natty at the end of the year. I think the top two teams in the Big Ten pretty clearly have to be Ohio State and Oregon. You can put them in whatever order you want, but right now with the off seasons those teams have had, which kind of mirror each other in the way that they've had a bunch of NFL caliber players return, decide not yet to go to the NFL draft. It feels like an all-in sort of proposition. They add veteran quarterbacks. They have coaching staff continuity, but Ryan Day's got a new face on that staff, and that's Bill O'Brien as the offensive coordinator brought down from the NFL ranks. And look, I, I think Bill O'Brien has been good as an offensive coordinator in college. You look at what he did at Alabama, the numbers were productive. And yeah, Bryce Young was amazing, but it turns out good coaches help or can can be helped by great players and vice versa. I don't think he had that in New England. We know he's going to have a lot of talent at, at Ohio State. Do you think Bill O'Brien changes the calculation at all as he takes over the OC role? And I hear he is going to call plays instead of Ryan Day. But I'm really somewhat glad that Ryan Day is at this point in his career Something that after last season I was calling for, numerous people were saying Ryan Day should not call plays, not because he's not good at it. I think he's a phenomenal play caller. I just think he needs to be more of an overseer over the entire program. It'll give him a better chance to manage the roster, which is one of the toughest jobs for a college football coach at this point in the college football um, history. I do think Bill O'Brien, his track record going back to the Houston Texans and even the uh, at Penn State, he has done a phenomenal job of getting a lot out of quarterbacks and sometimes the best years of those quarterbacks throughout their entire time playing college football. You go back to, I think it was Matt McGloin and I think it was Christian Hackenberg. And going back a little bit, you also get guys in the Houston Texans that weren't great quarterbacks, but Bill O'Brien got a lot out of them when they were down there playing football. You got Bryce Young and others. He's done a phenomenal job coaching up quarterbacks and Ryan Day wasn't pleased enough with Kyle McCord this year to give him and say, hey, you are going to be the guy that we're going to rely on in the upcoming season to be QB1. Said, hey, we're going to go to the portal to get somebody. We would love to keep you here to compete. Bring, it, bring in Bill O'Brien. Going to get a lot out of Will Howard, we do believe, and calling plays the Ohio State playbook, not the Bill O'Brien playbook. I do think that's a great way for the Buckeyes offense to be consistent, not just in the passing game, but also running the ball as well. Ohio State has had a great offseason, not just with the returning players, but the guys they've added via the transfer portal. Will Howard, the transfer quarterback from Kansas State, who won a Big 12 championship a couple of years ago. I don't think he's had a situation there with, with the Wildcats where he can maximize his full potential. I think he's someone who has a little bit more. If you look at his numbers, they're not that impressive. His best season passing the ball is 61% through the air. That's not that great. 
I think he can hit another gear, not necessarily Heisman gear, but I think he's got another level. You give him Ohio State's run game, which now is Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson. You got Caleb Downs coming back or coming into the room with a bunch of loaded guys on defense. Of those three impact transfers, Will Howard, Quinshawn Judkins, the running back, Caleb Downs, the safety from Alabama, who excites you the most? Oh, Caleb Downs, bro. That's an easy one. That's a no-brainer. He's Over the quarterback. Good. Over the quarterback. You like Caleb Downs. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen Will Howard's film. It's not like he's a future Heisman front runner or even in the conversation, the top 10 going into the season, easily Caleb Downs. And I say that knowing a defensive player at safety is not going to be in the Heisman conversation, which that's not something that I'm looking for when it comes to these three. My second one would be Quinshawn Judkins because he's just a dog. He is just a dude. I, I am high, somewhat, I'm okay with Will Howard. Like he satisfies and checks a box. But if you can get Qu uh Quinshawn Judkins to be a one-two punch with Travion Henderson, who has battled injuries throughout his career at Ohio State. That helps the Buckeyes running game, getting the experience that Judkins brings to Columbus. But then Caleb Downs, you're losing Josh Proctor, who played six years, got his best year at Ohio State in his final year in Columbus. But all of a sudden, you're bringing in a guy in Downs that lets Ransom be a guy that can just do what like Ransom does. And you can trust Downs to be a phenomenal piece and do a little bit of everything in the Buckeye secondary, that's great. But Downs also brings an element in the return game that Ohio State desperately needs. So Will Howard's a great replacement for Kyle McCord. I don't know if he's that much better or a greater quarterback than McCord. I do think, though, Judkins, phenomenal upgrade in the running back room. And Caleb Downs, I mean, talk about guys that could be future day one picks in the NFL draft. That's what Caleb Downs is. So do you, do you think that looking at Will Howard, and, and I, I really like him because I feel like he can be elevated by what Ohio State has, do you still feel with this Ohio State team with expectations sky high, and I think they should be, and Ohio State fans probably feel they should be, and I think a lot of national folks feel that way as well, is Will Howard performing at a level above Kyle McCord the biggest obstacle to the Buckeyes reaching their goals next year? If Bill O'Brien and Ryan Day come together and say we're comfortable doing the read option and letting the quarterback run the ball yes but if the thing is you're still using a quarterback in, in a traditional um drop back pass or set and you're not letting him run the ball i don't really think will howard's that big of an upgrade will howard has an element with his legs that he can utilize his legs at 65 240 but as i said recently to somebody on a show Justin Fields is a freak of nature. He's an athletic freak, and Ryan Day didn't allow him to use his legs and didn't really call a lot of the run plays that Justin Fields would have excelled at. C.J. Stroud, not super athletic like Justin Fields, but could still move around a little bit, didn't really have Stroud do that either. So all of a sudden, you get Devin Brown, and I don't know why they use a QB package in short yardage with a quarterback. I would have much rather had a running back do that same thing, would have been more productive. But now you got a guy in Devin Brown who's not – Super athletic either, but you're doing QB power with the quarterback. If that's something that you're going to see more of with Will Howard, okay, cool. But we haven't seen Ryan Day trust his starting quarterback to utilize his legs consistently, which makes me really hesitant to say that Will Howard is a major upgrade or even a somewhat of a better of an upgrade than Kyle McCord. McCord's a better passer. Decision-making was one that kind of got a little worse towards the end of the year. I think McCord's a better passer than Will Howard, which is what Ryan Day wants out of his offense. Jay Stevens locked on Buckeyes, talking all about the expectations for Ohio State, who I'm super high on. He's high on as well. Check him out on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Jay, thanks for stopping by the show. No problem. I really enjoyed it.